This is Neil Schneider from Meant to be Seen at Dimension 3 Expo in Pantene, France. I'm joined by Isabel de Montague, Business Development Partner for 3D TV Solutions. Welcome to the program, Isabel. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Now, I understand you're doing lots of different things with at 3D TV Solutions. Maybe you could fill us in a little bit about your company and what you're doing here at, at Dimension 3 Expo. Well, uh, first of all, we uh, are specialized in uh, autostereoscopic 3D. Uh, visible without glasses on autostereoscopic screens and uh, our company uh, gives all the tools in order to produce and transmit and broadcast 3D images on autostereoscopic screens. The only thing we do not do is we are not screen manufacturer. Okay, so when I'm thinking, when we hear the term autostereoscopic, we should be thinking of screens without glasses. So you could exactly. get so you get a full 3D experience without the need for, for add-on specs? Or any uh, glasses, absolutely. And what part of uh, autostereoscopic is, is 3D TV solutions focused on? So you don't make screens, what, what is it that you do? So uh, we make uh, cameras. We have uh, just presented here for the first time the uh, 3D autostereoscopic camera, which is not an assembly of different cameras. It's a camera all by itself and it can capture 3D images live and, uh, and you can see them uh, on an autostereoscopic screen immediately. Can you explain a bit what makes a camera special that's autostereoscopic? I mean, there have been, I mean, we're at the conference, there's lots of different 3D rigs. What makes a camera unique to be autostereoscopic versus the other cameras? The enormous difference is a stereoscopic camera, you need only two uh, points of views. With an autostereoscopic ca camera, you need as many points of views as is required by the screen. So the autostereoscopic screens go from five uh, to uh, some of them 60 points of views. So the camera has to be adapted to the screen, which is going to restitute the image. Do you have some ideas for applications behind this? Is there, are there some key markets that, that are striking 3D TV solutions? Well, um, all the markets where um, the fact that you can see in full depth without glasses is important. Uh, and it's uh, very important in any uh, case where uh, you have collaborative work, where uh, many people need to see the same thing at the same time. Uh, we have applications in, uh, for instance, our first product is the visualization of uh, CAD files. And uh, then we are going to come out with another product in about two months, which is the visualization of all the medical imaging files. And the uniqueness of our technology is the fact that the image that we restitute uh, is guaranteed to be geomet geometrically accurate. So in the case of uh, healthcare, for instance, and, uh, medicine is very important. So, and medicine, medicine applications, specifically in telemedicine, if a surgeon wants to do a um, surgical procedure from far away or train somebody far away, uh, you need to have the uh, assurance that the object that both of them are seeing is exactly the same. I could see the application of that, especially for surgery. You don't want the surgeon to, to mess up because of a miscalculation of depth cues. Absolutely. So um, ha has 3D TV Solutions put any thought on applications for the consumer side of things? Uh, absolutely. We, uh, we also are here. Uh, Dimension 3 is uh, more of an audiovisual industry um, trade show. And we have applications also for uh, digital signage and uh, audiovisual production in general. Because besides the camera, we have developed a, a whole suite of uh, software. And uh, one of them, for instance, is editing uh, of uh, all kinds of different medias that you can put into one uh, film. So we have uh, here a software that has um, integrated 2D images, uh, images coming from CAD files, um, real images, a hand, for instance, that has been filmed with our camera and computer-generated images, and all this has been uh, edited to create a, a film uh, that can be seen in 3D without glasses. 
Excellent. Um, there's movement happening. There's two sides to the industry right now. There's oh, actually there's a third with research and development. But um, the the main interest right now in, in among consumers is cinema and video games. Cinema, I completely appreciate. You know where this product can go. For gaming, does your company have some ideas of how game developers can, can benefit from your technologies? Um, there are two things, two answers to uh, what you are saying. We think that uh, cinema is going to continue being stereoscopic with glasses for a certain amount of time. But uh, I think that the market that is going to uh, request uh, auto-stereoscopic without glasses is uh, the home uh, environment because people will not want to have their television uh, needing to uh, carry glasses around. So that's the first point for the home. Uh, we think that it's going to be uh, much more a driver than the cinema would be. And uh, the second point is yes, we are seeing um, different applications in the uh, gaming industry. The first one is really um, immediate uh, extension of what we're showing here for the uh, audiovisual industry, which is the capability of showing your game at a trade show uh, without having, uh, where there are a lot of people passing, and uh, you, you can make a film that shows a, a scenario of your game and just show it at a trade show. I could completely appreciate that because if you go to any gaming conference, they're usually very, very crowded. People are walking by and the nature of, you know, granted, they, the gamers will enjoy the experience when they put the glasses on and they see the monitor, but, you know, when you're walking by, people put the glasses on, take them off, put them on, and it, it slows things down for other people who want to try the technology out. So this is, from a marketing point of view, I can see a lot of benefit it's, behind it that. It slows things down, and also there is that conviviality of the fact that when you are immersed into the looking at the game, you're not talking to the marketing person uh, because you do one thing or the other. So uh, it's a very convivial environment when you take off the glasses. So that's one uh, application. Then the second uh, thing that we are starting to uh, work on is the application for arcades, because there you have a, a specific game with one on one machine. And then the third application is uh, what we call the uh, oc occasional player, the Wii player. And so we have, um, we are thinking about applications in that environment, specifically because uh, we could integrate also um, the interactivity of the space between the screen and, and the person who is playing. Uh, for instance, uh, you have uh, butterflies and, uh, and you have a net, and so you could really catch the butterfly and something happens, the butterfly comes into your net if you have touched it, mm -hmm. virtually touched the virtual butterfly, but the, um, but, but then the, 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 you would really be immersed into the game because um, there would be a true interaction between the object and yourself. There's a lot of promise behind that. I mean, I was at, uh, it's funny that you used that example of a butterfly and catching them in a net. Uh, just last year, I went to an, a gaming event called Kokorami, mm -hmm. and it was a challenge for game developers mm -hmm. to, to come up with games that make stereoscopic 3D part of the game yes. itself. Yes. And one of the winners was, um, you know, it, they're fireflies, so you see bits of yes. light flying, yes. and you have to perfectly catch the net according yes. to the depth. Yes. Yes. And it's, it's, it's funny that you're using that example. Yes. And yes. I also... Yes, because this is... Uh, in, in 3D, we always see, uh, seem to see butterflies or um, um, football, uh, football things. It's always the same kinds of things that make people uh, imagine. Uh, but yes, there is this capability of int integrating all these technologies together to really give the uh, gamer um, a, a real impression of uh, realism, uh, which really is what auto-stereoscopic does to you. It's not so much of a special effect uh, aspect with auto-stereoscopy. Auto-stereoscopy, because you are not putting glasses, you are immersed by the reality of the feeling that you have. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us here at MTBS and uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, this is Neil Schneider, Meant to be Seen, Dimension 3 Expo.